And our um, last speaker on the panel, anyway, is Dr Chris Tisdall, who's going to talk about online and mobile learning in maths and science education. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming, thanks for having me, and thanks for tuning in uh, on the live feed. So I wanted to start my um, talk today by asking a couple of questions to the audience. Think back to high school. What was your worst memory of mathematics? And what was your best memory of mathematics? Now, did the answer to the first question come a bit faster than the answer to the second question? Well, those who answered my teacher to the first question that I posed will not be surprised to learn that there's a huge shortage of qualified and engaging maths teachers across Australia. And this is for a number of reasons. But um, to combat this, the Office of Learning and Teaching and the uh, Office of the Chief Scientist have been very, very carefully considering what, what to do and launch some schemes. Um, and it's very clear that they've been thinking very hard about it. And in fact, uh, we, we think there's, these schemes are great. Merlin and I have actually got a, a bid in on the, on the current round. And the, the, uh, the idea is to make the teachers better, okay? improve the supply and the quality of teachers. Now, um, I'm going to talk about the problem from another end, one that lies, uh, I guess, an angle that lies beyond the classroom. Now, the future of education, in my opinion, will be online, on demand, and mobile. And driving these, th these uh, trends will be the NBN, the National Broadband Network, and Australia's love affair with the mobile phone. So, for example, Australia has the second highest uh, penetration of, of, of smartphones in the world, just behind Singapore. Now, um, the, the angle that, that I'm going to talk about is empowering the learner rather than empowering the teachers. Okay, for me, it's a, it's a two-way, uh, you attack the problem from two angles to improve education. Um, now, you may have heard of uh, open educational resources and massive, uh, online, massively open online courses, OER and MOOCs. Um, these these uh, terms have popped up in the last few years. They're online platforms that offer millions of people unprecedented access to education. Uh, examples of platforms are YouTube EDU, uh, Academic Earth, edX, Coursera. Um, there's a whole, a whole lot of them. Now, the flexibility and the popularity of these um, modern and future-looking uh, learning platforms positions them very well to be uh, significant factors in the future of education. Now, in fact, I've been playing in um, the OER field myself, and in 2008, I started creating uh, YouTube videos to help my students at UNSW um, get access to out-of-class learning. Okay, so I've been do doing it for five years. Last year, I wrote a free uh, uh, textbook aimed at engineering students studying mathematics. The impact and the reach of, of these um, uh, initiatives have, have been vast and I would claim very positive. So, for example, uh, you know, I've had millions of hits on YouTube from within Australia and around the world. Half a million people have downloaded my, um, my textbook. Um, and the, the response, uh, you know, I mean, every year we, we survey UNSW students and over three years at UNSW, 100% of respondents agreed with the statement, I found the YouTube videos to be a valuable learning resource. So, if we take the crisis in mathematics education and we couple it with the new mathematics curriculum that's about to get rolled out, then is the answer building more open educational resources, or perhaps MOOCs, that empower the learners and are linked closely to the national curriculum in mathematics. Now, such a, such a platform could complement face-to-face teaching by providing the students with out-of-class support. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that this is going to replace teaching, it, it complements it. Now, I would also claim that there's three aspects to any sort of platform. One would be painting the big picture, sort of like an edutainment, ed, ed, edutainment style, um, high, high quality productions that paint a big picture and motivate 
the study of subjects through um, applications. The second would be summarising the content. And the third would be providing assessment tools that offer more than just mindless calculations. So, so for me, it's a three-step approach. It's far too convenient to solely blame teachers for the crisis in mathematics education. Yes, let's, in, let's enhance classical face-to-face -face mathematics teaching, but to provide a holistic approach to investing in Australia for a smarter future, we need to think beyond the classroom. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've, um, I've seen some of your YouTube videos. Very good, I thought, actually. And um, I can kind of imagine they're the sorts of things. I mean, often you see students, they go to a lecturer and they say, oh, my lecturer didn't really explain this, but I didn't get that bit. And they get the lecture notes from another lecturer. It's kind of filling that gap, I suspect. You can then go and look at the online resource and catch up on those things you might have missed. or you know, Because in a face-to-face -face lecture, You've only got to sort of vague out for a little while and you can miss something. I imagine it's a really useful resource. Well, I guess also, Graeme, I should say that mine are very, very amateur. They're totally unsophisticated. Um, it's more like reality TV than Hollywood. So, <laughs> <laughs> I will get you up to Catalyst Standard soon, I'm sure. <laughs>